So I'll go pretty. We know the power of LinkedIn. That's that's how we met. We haven't met in person yet, but we met through LinkedIn, through networking, and through collaborating and posting content and all the things that LinkedIn does. But still, for some newcomers, international students, LinkedIn is still um, it's a platform, but they don't know how to use it. We know that you know you need to have a headliner, banner, picture, about section. You can give in general idea like what should they do. And coming back to the resume that we talked earlier video, if they're customizing their resume for every job, then what they should put in the edu- in the experience part on LinkedIn? Are they going to change it every time? No. What's your take? Yeah. Okay, so resume is uh different it's like a a marketing tool that gets customized based on who you're sending it to and then linkedin you need to view it like a website Mm -hmm. um it's on it's 24 7 live and that one we have to get very clear on who what are we targeting so i like to do target based what are you targeting so what type of role are you targeting what type of companies do you want to target to work with Mm -hmm type of manager boss you want to work with right so you got to get clarity on that and yeah. then only can you write a, a craft a stellar or a linkedin profile but the key with linkedin profiles again it's your website it needs to generate leads for you otherwise it's not working plus just like a website you need to do seo search engine optimization same mm-hmm. thing with linkedin because linkedin is a search engine yes and this is where the analytics comes into play and are really important. I always say numbers don't lie. Data is important because it will help you keep getting better crafting in your, your LinkedIn. So just like Google search, LinkedIn is a search engine and everybody comes on for search. <clears throat> and this is why we need to do SEO. The number you want to, num- the analytics that will help you get your SEO max is the search engine, sorry, search appearance number on the analytics. So if mm-hmm. you go to your LinkedIn profile and these uh, analytics are private to you, no one can see it, click on the search appearance and <clears throat> that data is when it's not in real time, but it will tell you, you know, what job titles you were found for. Mm. And that will give you a good idea of what you're being found for. And that is something I always tell people to use because if you're not being found for the role you want next, yeah. there's a problem with the LinkedIn, right? Yes. Second thing is the way we want to design the LinkedIn profile is to target the role you want next, not the one you're in. That's yes. why it's important to always kind of have a updated, fresh LinkedIn. I like to tell people like you should constantly be working on LinkedIn. Because it's one platform that can get you so many opportunities beyond just a job. <clears throat> so that analytics is important. Now, how do we do SEO? It's having the right keywords placed throughout. I'm just going to like for time purpose, I would love to teach the entire LinkedIn. But quick three things you can do right this moment that would actually start ranking you higher in searches. <clears throat> your headline. Make sure yes. that you have your expertise, your subject matter expertise listed. And the industry you want to then follow by the industry you want to get into. The key is to have the right keywords that are for the role you want next, yes. right? I like to say uh, list your expertise, like what are you an expert in, and then list your top subject matter expertise that support that you're an expert in, let's say, website development, right? If you're yeah. an expert in developing e-commerce, so even go very niche onto what you're an expert in expert in developing we uh e-commerce website or store online but then now what would support that what skills do you need in mm-hmm. order to become a subject matter expert like a subject matter expertise that will help you become an expert mm-hmm. so listing that and then any uh industry that you want to get into you can list that right yeah. then the about section yes. section has introduced that skill thing where you can list top skills. So make sure you list your top five skills in the about section. The about section is more of a storytelling, mm-hmm. not let's copy and paste my history of my profile summary on my resume. Not that I would like to tell people like craft that into speak to the audience you want to attract, right? Like it has yeah. to be about them, not about you. Yeah. 
but the skills section. So in, LinkedIn introduced this, I think, probably last year or near the mid of 2022, where on the about section, you can list top five skills. It's a, a feature thing. And then same thing in each of the roles. Yes. Now you can list that top five thing, right? Mm -hmm. So that it shows your role, a little bit of experience, and then right away shows your top five, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure you maximize all five uh, from the about section as well as for each job. That my client, we just did this for one of my clients, boom, skyrocketed his uh, search appearance number. And then the next thing that will really help you start to rank higher in SEO is the skills section on his own. So make sure you have the skills section up to date. But the key here is the endorsements. Yes. Go get the endorsements because it helps in the back end of the SEO. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's not going to help you any otherwise. It's just there for the uh, the algorithm. Algorithm. So endorse people. People will endorse you. <clears throat> in my my community, I tell everybody to endorse each other. Yes. Um. Uh, so my coaching programs, I just tell people here, like you know, leverage all the people in the program or previously in the program to endorse each other. Right. Everybody yes. benefits. Yeah. So get those endorsements. I think that's like the biggest thing. Now, if you really wanted to capture someone's intention after the search appearance. I use a five cents uh, tool to craft the entire uh, profile because mm -hmm. you got to hit on the human senses to grab someone's attention. attention keep yeah. it. Uh, humans are driven by emotions. And honestly, these days, everybody's uh, so smart in how we consume things on, on online digital platforms. We're so immune to it now compared to before, especially in the last three years, thanks to pandemic. Yeah. Our brains are naturally kind of have a, a spammy filter mm. or filter built in that we can just kind of know that this person mm. is either just BSing, gen, gen, fluff, generic, right? Yes. So the key is to really stay away from genericness and really start to focus on well, what makes you so good at what you do You're doing, yeah. and how someone can benefit from them, right? Like if someone goes on my LinkedIn profile, my banner is very clear at this moment. So I'm very clear on what I'm targeting right now. I'm targeting, I, you know, as I launched my LinkedIn coaching program, business coaching, I want to get those type of clients now. Um, also, so my banner clearly states, I help coaches and consultant business based service-based businesses to generate leads. And then I'm being even very specific at how many leads I can get you from LinkedIn, mm -hmm. from a single text post, right? Yeah. Um, so being very target specific, who you speak targeting and then hit on their pain point to say, here's what I can do for you and here's your results are going to be. So really particular. Yeah, those are great tips. Uh, mm -hmm. But I have one, just a follow up. We know mm -hmm. that a lot of times when there are job postings, you know, you can apply directly on LinkedIn or you can go to the company's website and apply. In your opinion, is it okay to reach out to the hiring manager or to recruiter say, hey, Kurpreet, I saw this job, I applied online. This is what I can bring to the company. Mm -hmm. And this is my resume. Do you think that's a good approach? It all depends. Should we add the uh, resume or just a message? Okay, so that's a great follow-up question. And my approach to this is very different. One, you don't need to chase a recruiter. Ch recruiters are already chasing candidates. Yes. The talent they're looking for, right? So I would say don't chase the recruiter, but instead get the recruiter to chase you because that's what they're already doing, right? Mm -hmm. The key is you've got to be on the radar for them to want to chase you yes. based on what they're hiring right now, right? Now, speaking of hiring manager, like if you're going to approach a hiring manager, we got to have a strategy that's going to get them to reply back to you because everyone's reaching out to recruiters. Yeah. Everyone's reaching out to hiring managers now, right? So this is a kind of like a old news. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's doing it. Yeah. So when everyone's doing it, the the effect of it decreases. Goes down, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so now you have to have an innovative new approach. I I teach a different approach. I go, I teach, first of all, before you reach out to a hiring manager, I say you get to know their problems better than they know it. And this requires doing a deep dive research on the wild, wild web um, by looking at Googling their name, look at what employees are currently saying, 
um, you'll be able to access like private forums like Reddit, where people mm -hmm. are openly sharing tons of information. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always find the information if you just want to, if you want to look for it, right? Everything's yeah, available. Yeah. yeah. So you want to actually uncover what's their problem. Some people can easily do this in terms of you don't even have to go the wild, wild web. For example, if you're a social media expert and that's the role you want, go analyze the entire company's social media pages, know what their pages are, where they are, which platforms they are, analyze their content, what's working, what's not working, mm -hmm. and then now go do research on who's the top two direct competitors and then go analyze their social media pages, engagement, content, and do a SWOT analysis of strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats comparing to their competitors. Yeah. And then that's your way in uh, to, to the hiring manager's outlining, hey, you know, I analyzed your pages, your social media against your competitors and name them. So name drop the competitors. And interesting enough, here's what I found. So highlight that one big problem you found. Mm -hmm. That's one big problem triple downs to many little problems, right? Yeah. So you and then tell them how much they're losing, how much is costing to have this problem, and say, listen, I I can fix this because I already fixed that X, Y, and Z. Let's schedule a call. Okay. I call it a strategy call, discovery strategy call. And I would love to go over this with you and give you some recommendations on how you can fix this problem that approach will get them on the phone call versus going with hey i want a job i came across your job here's my resume and then you know i can show you all the messages i got recently when i posted them hiring yeah even though i said i don't want a resume and here's what i'm looking i made it even very particular on what i'm looking for uh, but people still, again, we're, people are so immune to yeah. the way they do job searching that they can't even read what someone's even telling you what to, do. what to do. Yeah. yeah, and it's always the same thing. I had this many years experience giving a whole list of skills they can have or can do and just going on about themselves. So that never that approach would never work. But if you come just simply with, here's your problem, I've discovered and competitor has a better uh, social media and they're getting more of your customers going to them but yeah. here's what we can do to dominate the social media game so mm -hmm. that you can increase your sales who wouldn't want to jump on the call when you definitely that approach definitely. right yeah. so like approach 10 hiring manager was that i guarantee you'll get at least eight people would jump on a yeah, call with you. yeah those are eight great. out of ten yeah quality over quantity yeah those are great tips for me thank you very much again for the audience watching or listening, if you have other tips in terms of how to use LinkedIn, in terms of job search or reaching to hiring manager, please leave them below and tune in next time for another great question with Gurpreet.